I'd like to start this short little video by asking the question, what is statistics? Because most of you are taking the statistics class, but you probably don't know exactly what it is that we're going to be learning this term. So rather than answer this question directly, I'm going to start by asking another question. Hmm, have you ever had Raisin Bran? Raisin Bran has this claim that says, we give you two scoops of raisins in every box. And you are probably used to seeing this advertisement around here. But if you're a lover of Raisin Bran, you might not feel the love when you pour your bowl of cereal and only find that there's not as many raisins as you would expect. Because they're claiming, hey, we give you two scoops of raisins in every box. But is that something that they can really advertise? Well, the answer is yes, because as advertisement, the whole goal is to give us an impression that there's a lot of raisins in each box of Raisin Bran. But they're not trying to tell us specifically, oh, there's specifically two scoops, because we don't know the size of the scoops. So it's not something we can actually sue them over. We can just be disappointed. Okay, so maybe this is you down in this bottom left corner picture here um, when you get your bowl of Raisin Bran. So we're gonna pretend as a class project, pretend of course, that we wanna sue the company over the shortage of raisins. And so the question then becomes, how do we go about doing this? You know, what do we need to do? And I usually talk with my class and I'm gonna share my face now with you. And I say, okay, let's talk about this. How would we go about actually doing this? And everyone says, well, we're gonna to have to count raisins within a box of raisin bran. But have you actually ever done that before? Because it's not that easy to do. So the first question usually we ask is, how many boxes of Raisin Bran should we buy? And, you know, I don't know, you know, that's kind of the question. Well, let me tell you, some people start by saying, well, let's go buy five or 10 boxes. And then someone says, oh, that's not enough. You know, we got to have a whole lot more. And then I ask, how many more? Okay, and then no one knows. So let me give you an answer here. If you were to... Um, a survey for the United States and try and talk about voter opinion and things like that, there are several hundred million adult residents. Well, aren't we, doesn't the Kellogg's Raisin Bran Company put out over a million boxes of um, Raisin Bran every year? Yeah, so we're almost in that same category. Well, how many people do they survey when they do polls of the United States? Well, the answer is, you know, a little over a thousand, a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred people representing the three hundred million people in the United States. Well, those have to be well chosen people to represent the entire United States, but still we're able to take a very small sample and make a prediction about a large number of people in the United States. So I'm going to pretend that we're going to buy 1,000 boxes of Raisin Bran. So my next question is, can we just go out and say, hey, let's go buy our, our Raisin Bran here at the local Ralph's Food for Less whatever store? Well, the answer is they probably don't have 1,000 boxes in their inventory. But would we want to actually go and buy them at one store? Probably not. If we're suing Kellogg's or Post, whatever company it is, we're going to want to have a representative sample from throughout the United States. We're going to want our Raisin Bran boxes to come from different lots and from different manufacturing locations because it's not just one place where they make the Raisin Bran. Okay, they have multiple factories. And what if the nozzle that releases the raisins that go inside the box gets kind of jammed up at one factory? Well, you could have a biased uh, sample, so to speak, where there's either too many or too few raisins per box. 
I know that's kind of a weird example here, but that's kind of what's going on here. Now, let's say we're doing this and let's pretend we got a thousand box and we're gonna get boxes and we decide, you know, let's go for all 50 states. Let's get a couple samples from each state. Okay, and so I know 50 times 20 is a thousand boxes. So I'd say, hey, everybody, it's your job to go and contact 20 random people from each of the 50 states. And you'd each be in charge of getting in touch with them. We're going to send them a coupon to go buy a box of raisin bran. And they're going to go and buy that box of raisin bran. They get to eat it. And then they're going to do what? they're going to count the raisins for us. Okay, have you ever counted raisins? Not an easy thing to do. I mean, yeah, it sounds easy, but have you really done it? Because, you know, every once in a while you get a cluster of several raisins stuck together. Are you gonna count that as one raisin or are you gonna count that as multiples by splitting it apart? And then what if you have these little slivers of raisins? Are you going to count those as a full raisin or is it our job to put those little slivers together until they form what we think is a raisin and go that route? We got to answer those questions, okay? In surveys, you always need to plan ahead, okay? You got to know what is a raisin. So we'd have to say, this is a raisin. This is how you count them. This is how we want you to do it. If we go back to the 2000 election, back into Miami, where they had a hard time determining what is a vote for which candidate, okay? And back then, there, there was a whole issue in the, in, in the United States, it was all over the news about the hanging Chad ballots in Broward County in Florida. And they got attorneys for both the Republicans and the Democrats out there, and they were inspecting every single ballot because those were the punch card type of ballots. And they had these little, sometimes when you punch a hole, the, the, the circle doesn't fall out all the way. So they had these circles that were hanging there that called hanging chads. And that became kind of a, a topic throughout the United States. Well, you know, was it a vote for one person? You know, they had to find the intent of the voter. Well, that's kind of the same thing for us when it comes to counting the raisins. So bottom line is we're going to go and we're going to have people buy these boxes of raisin brands. We're going to re um, compensate for them through a coupon or whatever. And they're going to send us the results. OK, well, what are we going to do with these results? We're still trying to get evidence to sue this company. Well. We could be making bar charts, histograms. We could do different calculations. We could calculate the mean, the median, the mode. And most of us would probably say, let's go with the mean, okay? So let me switch back to this other picture here for a second that I have on this other screen. And we're gonna be asking how will we go about doing this? And let's pretend that we, decide that what is two scoops of raisins? I pretended that's 300 raisins per box. And they're gonna be giving us this data coming back and we're gonna get the mean number of raisins per box. Now, we have to sue the company and we're probably allow them to go under 300 raisins, but if they go beyond a certain point, which we'll call a critical value, we're gonna say, hey, you know what? That's too far below 300 raisins. We think, you know, you're jipping us the raisins. And so we're gonna sue them. So this value that I have a question mark next to, that's called a critical value. That's where we make a decision on where we're going to really move forward with this lawsuit or not. So let's pretend just for the sake of argument that we do this, we get our thousand boxes of raisin bran counted, we get the mean number of the response. Some are gonna be right around 300, some are gonna be more, some are gonna be less. And I don't know that it's actually gonna be centered at 300, but let's pretend that they're claiming 300 raisins. We can't really go with a two scoops type of claim because that's not quantifiable. So let's pretend 300 is what the lawsuit's based on. They're giving us at least 300 raisins would be the claim. And we're going, nah, I think it's down here somewhere. 
Now, what if our data comes in at like 307 per box on the average? What are we gonna do? We're not going to sue. Our evidence doesn't even back us up. We're trying to say, hey, you are jipping us raisins when in fact we're finding that the data says there's more than 300. So we're gonna basically cut the lawsuit right then and there and say, hey, we don't have a case here. Okay, now, what if our mean value comes out way down here at 220 raisins per box? Well, in that case, wow, 220 is really far away from 300. We were justified in thinking that they were not holding up to their claim of at least 300 raisins, and we would be very justified in suing them. Now, what happens, however, if we're down close to some boundary. At some, what if it comes in at, I don't know, 295 raisins? Would you be willing to say, you know, say, okay, you know what? That's within a margin of error. That's okay. Or would you say, eh, I don't know. That was a thousand boxes we got. And on the average, you were down at 295. So that's kind of a decision you'd have to make here. But at some point, we're going to say, I don't know whether it's 295 or 288 or 287, but at some point we're going to say, you know, here's where we're drawing the line. If the mean comes in below this number, we're moving forward with this lawsuit. If the mean is above that number, yeah, we'll give you the, the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, well, you might be right, you may be wrong, but we're not going to sue you. Now, why am I giving you this example here? I mean, what's the whole purpose of it? Not because I want to talk about Raisin Brand. I wanted to talk about what is statistics, okay? In chapter one, which deals with sampling methods and polling, we talk about how take a sample. How do we go and get the information that we need? In our Raisin Brand example, how do we go and get the people who are going to answer the question of how many raisins per box? Chapter two is about organizing data. The information that comes in has got to be organized. We draw a bar chart, we draw a histogram, pie graphs, things like that. That's all chapter two. We move on to chapter three, and that's the calculations, the means, the medians, the modes, the standard deviations. Well, we talked about that in the Raisin Brand example. We moved on to chapter four. Chapter four is about probability. Hmm, what's the probability they gave us more than or less than 300 raisins? Then we move on to chapters five and six, which talk about the binomial distribution and the normal distribution, which is that bell curve picture I just showed you a little bit ago. After that, we move on to chapter seven, where we create confidence intervals. And in confidence intervals, we're going to say, hmm, I am 95% confident you're giving me between this many and this many raisins. Okay, we also in chapter seven are gonna learn how to calculate a sample size. How many boxes of raisin brand do we need to sample in order to be 95% confident or 90% confident in the results that we claim. Now we then move on to chapters uh, eight and nine. In chapters eight and nine, we get into hypothesis testing. Here's the claim. We give you this many raisins. The hypothesis test model says, okay, now let's come up with an alternate, what we think really is true instead. Let's gather the data and see, is this true or not? And then we render a decision. In our case, yes, you are giving us far under 300 raisins, or oh, maybe you're not. We're going to allow you the benefit of the doubt. Okay. Then we also have a chapter on linear regression and then even more hypothesis testing after that. So this example I like because it really tells you quite a bit about what this whole course is that we're getting into in a nutshell and sort of a fun way. And as we go through the course, especially in the second half of the course, I'm going to be referring back to this example as kind of an anchor for us to be working with. So you're going to have an activity 
that you'll be doing in just a little bit that will ask you to talk about what we just talked about in this video and to respond to me based upon this. Okay, I hope you enjoyed my little story. Um, yeah, good luck with it all.